Driving the Pan American Highway has come with its own set of challenges, but driving our UK van specifically has brought a new set of complications that we have to deal with if we want to continue any further towards Argentina. So we have decided that this is the furthest south we're going to go. Good morning from Antigua in Guatemala. We're in a little town in the south of the country. This has been so highly recommended to us. Some people saying it's one of their favorite places of the entire trip. Ben is just out walking the dogs now. We're in this beautiful campsite that has got so much green space. It's been amazing for these guys. But Antigua is a very significant part of this trip for us, which I'll explain about shortly. But I'm um, seeing as Ben's out with the dogs. I guess I am on coffee duty. Hey guys, it's a bit wet out there this morning, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's because it's gloriously cold at night, so there's dew on the ground, which is amazing. There's that nice split between it's nice and hot during the day with a breeze and then like cool and cold at the night, so you're yeah. sweating trying to sleep. Yeah, it's amazing. Beautiful. Oh yeah. And whereabouts did you put them? In the box maybe. In here. <gasps> oh, right here. Oh, right here then. Do you want to show everyone the sun damage? Yeah, look at that. The sun's like bleached this little section from where it sits on the window. Yeah. Of the cushion, it's crazy. So, but it's not just that, it's, it's where we have the window open like that, and it's just that bit. This bit isn't damaged because it's obviously protected by the, the glint, uh, the tint. tint. But that bit we have open. It's, yeah. And that was down when we were in, on the coast of Mexico. Yeah, just was, Mexico. The UV happened. was so strong there. That's crazy. After I put my back out last week, it's much better now. It has forced me into getting moving again, getting fit again. So, Chess has dragged me up to do her workouts. The stuff that we want to do like down the line and stuff, I need to be in like a good physical like shape. shape. My back isn't. This is why I've had to get the Javianas out because I've literally walked. Ben's got flat feet and look how bad you yeah. walk on your, like you walk on your ankles. And I kind of walk on the outside. That probably doesn't help either, to be fair. No, 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 it doesn't. So, yes, the Javianas. Not gonna miss me for a mile off, are you? I don't, I don't like you them. You don't like them, do you? I love no, them. They're too garish, I like them. I like them because they're garish. You like them because I don't like them. I like them because <laughs> you don't like them, yeah. <laughs> You can hold us accountable guys, hold us accountable. So as well as starting a new fitness routine, we've also been drinking AG1 daily and a massive thank you to them for sponsoring this week's video. Embarrassingly, as a 40 year old man, I have the palate of a 14 year old boy. I don't really like veg, which means my body struggles to get the nutrients that it needs. This works really well for me. It supports my immune health. It gives me my daily dose of vitamin C and zinc. It also keeps me nourished all day, every day with a broad spectrum of micronutrients and phytonutrients, which my 39 plus one body has been crying out for. And the best bit is, it's an effortless daily habit. It takes less than a minute to do, and it's perfect for when you live in a van, something nice and quick and easy. So one scoop, one bottle of water, ready in 60 seconds. It cannot be easier than that. See, it tastes really good. It tastes like, like it's got like a citrus kick to it. It doesn't taste like broccoli. It's great. <laughs> if you're interested, you can go to drinkag1.com forward slash overlanding Sophia or scan the QR code to save 20% when you subscribe. You'll also receive a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 along with five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. 
think after that workout, we have earned ourselves a little breakfast in town. Oh, yes. Do you? Little breakfast date. <laughs> and go and see what Antigua is like. We have heard nothing but incredible things about this town. There is so much to say about this magical town nestled in the highlands. Antigua gives you a glimpse into the vibrant and rich cultural life of Guatemala. The winding maze of cobblestone streets and enchanting colonial buildings are set against a backdrop of volcanoes that tower above the town. A reminder of the volatile landscape in which Antigua sits and which mostly destroyed it in an earthquake 300 years ago. I don't know, have you paid attention to what the statues are or what they're doing? I had to do a double take, I was like, interesting. 10 out of 10 for That's charges. definitely, there's definitely, definitely pigeons everywhere. That's definitely a bloke that's created that, isn't it? <laughs> definitely. Wow, look how pretty this is. Uh, guys, this is one of the most famous sites in Guatemala. Can I just stop you? Ben has got some, as you can't tell already, he's rehearsed some facts. I've got some facts. facts, got some facts. <laughs> Firstly, if you ever buy the Guatemalan Lonely Planet book, that is what you see on it. On the right hand side is a monastery, and on the left hand side was a school. Was it a monastery or a convent? Oh, convent, sorry, you're right, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, fact check, yeah. So there was a convent on this side and a school on this side, and the nuns used to teach, but they took a vow of, like, well, they took a promise that they wouldn't be seen. In order to get from the school or the convent to the school, they had to find a way without being seen, and that's why they built the arch. This has to be one of the prettiest towns that we've been to. It's just so beautiful. All the buildings are gorgeous, all painted these cool colours, like rustic. And then, like, you look down the street, and there's just this huge volcano, like, looming above the town. Oh, we've got. That's how I was just talking. I was going to say, we've got for breakfast and coffee, so this really cool little cafe. Bowl, and oh my god, look how big it is! Granola, banana, strawberries, coconut, chocolate chips, and oh, look at that! Oh, that looks really good, babe. That looks really, really, really good. It's like barley vibes again. Ben is having a spiritual moment over his chai latte. I literally had died and gone to heaven. This is the nicest chai latte I've ever had in my life. Ever. <laughs> You need to try that. Well, I've got a flat white, which looks incredible. I'm not going to lie. Honestly, try that. Look at the size of this craft shop. There is everything from artwork to like, look at all these rugs, textiles. Don't hit me, don't hit me. Stop it. No. You can have what you want, have what you want. Dilemma. I like love ceramics and pottery, but it's just you can't do it in a van, it's gonna break. We looked at sending stuff home, didn't we? And it was gonna cost like 600 it's pounds. So expensive. Like, how beautiful is that? But well, I don't think it's a good idea. These will be all right, these are like wooden, wooden balls. There you go. This whole back wall is just full of wooden masks. Wow, now these are cool. You got these ones which are brightly coloured, full of flowers, and these which are more like kind of realistic. -y. Look at these. Shall we get one? No. No. Not maybe one of these. These are a bit creepy. Oh, bloody hell. I know, it made me jump a little bit. Hello. Well, I love that this little camp spot is only, what, a five, ten minute walk into town? Yeah. Not very far at all. So back here, a little oasis of peace and calm. And if you've seen clips of the volcano that rises above Antigua, Volcan de Agua, and thought, oh look, it's smoking. It's actually an inactive volcano. It's just covered in wildfires at the minute. 
there's like helicopters going overhead dropping water on it they're looking pretty bad actually and at night you can just see it actually looks like it could be lava but it's just like little pockets of wildfires which is really sad i'm hoping they put it out soon because right now you can see the volcano but when the smoke blows this way was it yesterday you just couldn't see you couldn't see it at all it was just that smoky but every now and then over in this direction you won't be able to see it right now is uh, Fuego which I think is Guatemala's most active volcano and that is erupting and that is just puffing off lava and smoke fairly regularly right what goods did we buy then? this is what we bought let's go with oh yeah Jess bought a pillow well she thought she bought a pillow no, in a fact cushion. she bought oh, a cushion sorry in fact she bought a cushion case Does, do any other guys get confused between a cushion and a pillow they're quite different uh, they're things. literally both exactly the same thing they're not please tell me i'm right on this cushions are for sofas and sitting on pillows are purely for sleeping in beds ben will always call like the pillows cushions and it drives me mad and now he's just called that cushion a pillow oh yeah and it drives me mad i'm gonna rest my head on it at some point so it becomes oh really I, I picked this because it had the filling yeah and then she was like oh no the filling is not for sale so now yeah. we just got an empty pillowcase yeah or cushion case ah oh, there you go see prove my point pillowcase and then show it show it show oh, okay it. yeah it's really nice it's made locally by one of the one of the villages i love it this is very nice massive bag of locally grown coffee I think it's over there somewhere where the plantation is. Surrounded by the three volcanoes that provide a stable microclimate and a rich volcanic soil ideal for growing coffee. So a nice little cool bag. So once we've run out of our Walmart coffee, we can go to some good stuff. You can't come to Guatemala without buying Guatemalan chocolate. The home of chocolate. Oh. Mmm. Is that nice? Mmm. Oh, that's really nice, baby. See what I mean? Mmm. That oh. little bar was not enough, was it? Wow. It says it's dark chocolate, but it's not horribly bitter. It's just. Mmm. No. Mm. That's 70% as well. Oh. That is so good. It's only the size of my hand. I do have quite long hands. You're massive hands. They're not massive. They're like alien hands, aren't you? They're like the Terminator like, thing. I don't have. <laughs> I've got like slender man arms, and I haven't got what do you call it? A wrist bone? You have got yeah. You got really like thin. Basically, if you look at Ben's, you know, like most people have a wrist, and then it goes out to their yeah. palm. Sure. <laughs> <My eyes go. laughs> I've got like swords. You've got two little daggies, like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> I thought I was a thing off Terminator. Yeah, the team right there. Is it? I can't remember what one it was. Not, not Arnie, the other one. Apparently. Terminator 2. Apparently, when I was born, I cut my mum coming out. That's literally the most disgusting thing. <laughs> because of my arm. I'm not joking. I came up with my arm coming out. Then you came out the wrong flipping way. No, you come out head first, but my arm was up. I have a question. You know, when I was born, yeah. Did I come out with my hand out that ripped you? You did, yes. Told you. I've got dagger hands. Sorry about that, Mum. The midwife said to me, she came out and said, hello, I'm in the world. <laughs> Are you saying that I came, I was, like, came out like Superman? Yeah. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> we are going out for drinks tonight, going to sample the nightlife of Antigua. It looks like it's going to be really good. First, we're gonna go get something to eat, have an early dinner. And party. And go for a little party. So before we go for a bite to eat, opposite our campsite are these huge ruins. Do you know what they remind me of? It reminds me of being back in Turkey. This yeah, or years. somewhere like, like Pompeii or something, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so two friars came here in 1685, asked for permission to build this. It was granted in 1695, and then took about 50 years, I think, to build. And then about 20 years after that, there was a massive earthquake and pretty much destroyed most of it. They rebuilt it, and then another earthquake destroyed it. And then it just stayed like this. Wow, I mean, look at the size of these blocks. We haven't seen ruins like this 
probably on this entire trip, have we? No, that's true, we haven't. I'm gonna take ruins for granted back home. Don't. <laughs> and you've not seen them for two years. They're pretty damn cool. So if you watched last week's video till the very, very end, you'll have seen that we have got our shipping dates through for Colombia, which is very exciting. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Antigua is a significant point for us because after this, we're not driving south anymore. After yep. we leave here, we're officially heading northeast, back towards Belize and back towards Mexico. Oh, wow. You know what, there's just so many, you start to go down one way and then a little corridor just like peels off and there's so many little nooks and crannies to explore. As Chess was saying, and we've said a few times in the past, we can't drive any further south because we have a right-hand drive. Costa Rica and Nicaragua do not allow right-hand drives in as a full-on ban. So there's no point of us driving all the way down through El Salvador, Honduras. Honduras. I don't even think we can get into El Salvador really either with the right hand drive. Uh, okay, but no matter how far south we drive, we have to turn around and come back. So we have decided that this is the furthest south we're gonna go before heading towards Belize and then eventually back into Mexico to ship from Veracruz to Colombia. In our excitement exploring the ruins, I just wanted to elaborate on a couple of things that we forgot to mention. With Costa Rica and Nicaragua blocked, there are no ways to drive around these countries as they span the whole width of Central America from coast to coast. If we had a left-hand drive vehicle and we could drive further south, we would still have to ship from Panama to Colombia to avoid the infamous Darien Gap. This is a stretch of dangerous, unpoliced, lawless jungle connecting Central and South America. It has no roads through it, making it impassable. Any overlanders taking this route have to ship around the gap, and this is most commonly done between Panama and Colombia. So we're just shipping sooner than we would otherwise have to anyway. We could have driven straight to Veracruz when we landed in Mexico, but we really wanted to do this loop so that we could come and experience some of Central America and South Mexico, which is a place neither Ben or I have ever been before. And so far, it's been the best decision, minus the food poisoning. <laughs> You can really get lost in here. You could, can't you? Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, look, you can just still see the wildfires burning on the, on the volcano there. Wait till we get to see the Mayan ruins yes. up north. I can't wait we for that. We are definitely seeing some Mayan ruins. I'm surprised it's taken us this long. Oh, baby, you can still see the carvings on the ceiling. Oh, wow, yeah. Look at this. Wow. It reminds me of something off Game of Thrones. Like yes. the dragons destroyed. I can't get over this. It's huge, isn't it? It must have been enormous. And the size of these columns that have just crashed. Yeah, hear that? Hear what? That. Pizza time. Oh, shut Come up. On. In keeping with the trip, we have come to an Argentinian restaurant. The music here is really, really loud. We're sat right next to the speaker. The party is getting started. We're having pizza and cocktails. I've gone for a daiquiri. Magnificent cocktail. It's a good one. That was probably one of the worst pizzas. <laughs> it was awful, bad. wasn't it? Absolutely it awful. It was so bad. It had so much. That place had so much potential. But the margaritas that, were good, though. The cocktails were good. I can give it that. But we are back now. Do you think I should need a jacket? I also just want to say thank you to Bobby. Um, he sent us a message on Instagram telling us about a little speakeasy here, um, a little cocktail bar speakeasy that you have to go through a red telephone box to get to. You got might... the keys to get in? Yes, yeah, so we might go for a dance later. The bed is pre-made. 
Yep, yeah, these guys are going to be keeping it comfy. Like, you know you're backpacking or doing van life when you're like going to go dancing in your Birkenstocks. Right, ready? We'll see you guys later. Let's go. Huh? It's rammed. Do you not think we'll get a drink? Right there, like a Oh, I'm so gutted about that. That was absolutely rammed, and the people that went first, the guy was saying there's no tables, you can, you can wait, but we don't know how long. So then we were behind them. And then we were behind them, yeah. It was cool in the little telephone box, it was, though. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, that's a shame. We should have got here earlier. Yeah. A few days later, we actually made it back successfully to the little speakeasy with our friends Nick and Kate, and it was awesome. But this night, we celebrated a big milestone in our trip, and we partied like the old days. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I had a <laughs> Guys, this just gets even better. We're sat outside, and they have people come out like with a menu to use my drinks, so you don't even need to leave your seats. Terrace and there's table service for cocktails and drinks and then there's the club downstairs if you want to go and have a little boogie. Yeah, this there might not be much footage after this. What was that? I said there might not be much footage after this. <laughs> yeah. Because this is gonna get messy. 